Hello to your students, welcome to Shiksha Mantra once again. Today we aren't going to discuss about any grammar topic. Rather, it would be a discussion on literature. Yes, today we are going to discuss the very famous poem, The Heart of the Tree by Henry Bono, that is available in our ICSE Class 10 syllabus. We'll have a detailed discussion of the poem and we'll try our best to find out what are there in the poem, its theme, its analysis, everything will be done here. So stay tuned to the video till the end and I can assure you, you'd have a good concept of what the poem actually is. So let's begin our discussion of The Heart of the Tree by Henry Bono. So first, uh, let's discuss a bit about the poem and the poet. The Heart of the Tree, uh, this is actually written by the American poet and novelist Henry Bono. And it's a fine piece of poetry. If you consider it, the poem comes with a very simple theme and the structure is also much simple. So simplicity is the very striking factor about this poem. Everything is kept simple and the poem is originally published in 1912. So now the condition, the society, what we are in in 2021 is very much different from that of 1912 that is uh, 110 years ago but the poem and its relevance is very much very very vocal even for today so the poem is about planting a tree and who doesn't know that planting a tree is a great work for the mankind but the poet has found out some new ways to look at the plants and plantation so in this poem the heart of the tree he glorifies the fact that is plantation and the act to show how a tree helps life on earth and says very very clearly that it has a direct connection to a nation's growth so if we consider what's there in this poem it's about plantation of trees and who doesn't know plantation is a great work we must do it so this is such a common theme that i consider it's really difficult for a poet to make some very uh, clear mandate about what the theme is and why he is dealing with such a common topic but this has been very very beautifully executed here in this poem and we have to learn this but before we shift to it it's better to think of the construction the structure of the poem so there's three stanzas in the poem and everything is very simple so here when the poem starts it starts with a refrain and there the poet asking what the man actually plants who plants a tree i have told you now what a man actually plants that's the question and this is how he had made this topic this simple topic very common topic in an uncommon presentation so this simple topic becomes interesting for people because of that refrain, because of that question. But he didn't wait for anyone to 
replied it. But he replied it all by himself and shows what a tree means to the humankind and to the nature, thus providing how great that man is. Who is that man who is planting a tree? The rhythm for the poem is also amazing because the rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B, B, C, C, A, A for each stanza. So this is a deviation from the celebrated Spencerian stanza, a nine line stanza with the scheme A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C, though the language is simple, careful wording makes the poem more expansive and obviously musical and attractive. So let's begin with the first stanza of the poem. We'll make a line by line explanation. So first we'll learn the first two lines of the first stanza. What does he plant who plants a tree? He plants a friend of sun and sky. The poem opens with the refrain which asks, what does he plant who plants a tree? And that sheds the tone for the entire poem. We instantly realize that the poet is going to explain the usefulness of planting a tree. However, the poet himself answers by stating that the man plants a friend of sun and sky by planting a tree. A plant grows upwards and aims to reach the sun and the sky. So it is as if the sun and the sky get a new friend in a tree. Secondly, the tree needs sunlight and air to survive. Finally, the trees seem to absorb the heat and save the earth from the scorching sun giving an implication that uh, the sun becomes friendly in the presence of the trees. So the first two lines focuses on what? On the usefulness of a tree. And it's all about balance of nature. The balance of nature is the striking factor and you always remember it. Whenever you are going to write down some answers, obviously these points would be much helpful. So note these points if you like. The next two lines, he plants the flag of bridges free, the shaft of beauty towering high. So there's an image of a flag with a shaft that's towering very high. So first let's uh, find out what are the flags and what are the shaft. The speaker adds what? He then adds that the man plants a flag that flies freely in the mild breeze. The poet here compares the leafy branches of the tree to a flag and the stem to the beautiful shaft. That's the pole of the flag that stands tall. So that's the uh, explanation for the uh, third and fourth line. And now we we'll shift to fifth and sixth line. He plants a home to heaven an eye for song and mother croon of bird. By planting a tree, the man plants what a home? For whom? For the sweet singing birds. Where? High in the sky and it also near the heaven. So these are the questions that would help you to understand these lines. And near the heaven, this is a very, very important here. Heaven doesn't mean the heaven where gods and goddesses live. Rather, here heaven means balance. Here heaven means beauty of nature. Here, heaven means a beautiful order. So, actually, by planting a tree, the planter keeps the earth habitable. 
habitable for birds and it helps maintaining our ecosystem and if the balance of nature if ecosystem is properly maintained you know what will happen this art will become heaven so it's an eye an eye what an eye to heaven an eye so we'll get near to heaven though it's not proper to say it will become heaven but we'll get near to heaven that means we'll have a great life i am to say uh, we'll have a good life rather also will have a great life the next lines in harsh and happy twilight heard the trouble of heaven's harmony these things he plants so plants a tree in quiet and happy twilight we can hear those birds chirping which is harmonious to heaven's own tunes in the entire first stanza of the heart of the tree the poet accentuates the importance of trees in maintaining the holistic beauty of nature moreover the use of the words like heaven an eye heaven's harmony and towering high it's aimed at giving an impression that the work of planting a tree is indeed a heavenly and glorious deed now if we focus on the finishing line of the stanza it forms a very logical whole with the opening line one asking a question and the other completing the answer thereby making a complete expression in the first stanza it begins with a question and it ends with a perfect answer now it's time for us to discuss the second stanza what does he plant who plants a tree he plants cool shade and tender rain the same question once again it's asked the question is repeated to begin this new stanza i have told you in each and every stanza it would work as a refrain and it attempts to answer again in the subsequent lines so we'll find out what the answer would be the tree he plants provides us what provides a cool shade and helps in bringing rain so again the uh, comfort the prosperity of nature is restored by planting a tree and she then barred of days to be and years that fade and flush again so a tree will produce seed and bud in future years will pass silently but the tree will remain here through its sheets producing new trees so if these two lines are very much uh, uh, keenly observed you'll find that it speaks of a hope it speaks of a hierarchy it speaks of a heritage so there would be a heritage a heritage of what a heritage of trees we'll get trees like recurrings their recurring generations of trees will get the nature will get and the earth will become beautiful it will be heavenly will have a quality life here only by planting trees he plants the glory of the plains he plants the forest's heritage i was talking about the heritage now so i'll find here in this line trees are the main elements that make a plain area green and beautiful so here the poet describes trees as the glory of the plain moreover today's single tree may turn into a forest some day so by planting a tree now the man plants a forest's heritage this forest's heritage uh, this phrase is very much vital so you have to uh, keep some extra account for this okay so next uh, shift to the next lines the harvest of a coming age the joy that unborn eyes sell she these things he plants who plants a tree so the speaker mentions that uh, planting a tree today 
would give fruits in coming days. So who will enjoy those delights? Our next generations would be delighted, seeing so much vegetation and reap its benefits. So the forest is heritage and we are planting the trees to make our future bright. So uh, when a person plants a tree, he also be considered a visionary. He is doing something for future. He is doing something for his future generations. So all the credits of the benefits that the future generations will get goes to whom? Goes to the man who has planted a tree. Now if we summarize the second stanza, what do we get here? So in this stanza of the poem, the heart of the tree, the poet stresses on the importance of planting a tree for making this earth a better living place for future generations. So that's the uh, points that has been described here in the second stanza. Now we'd shift to the concluding, that's the third stanza. So let's uh, read it out. What does he plan to plant a tree? He plants in sharp and leaf and wood, in love of home and loyalty, and far cast thought of civic good, his blessings on the neighborhood. So this time I haven't uh, taken two lines, rather I have taken five lines because uh, these five lines must be considered together to get the complete sense. Otherwise, you can't uh, get the complete sense from it. So again, the same question. By planting a tree, the man shows what shows his love and loyalty for this earth and this earth is his home. It reflects his sense of civic duty and his blessings on the neighborhood. All these are reflected in the sharp and leaf and wood. So what does this expression uh, mean? What does this phrase mean? Sharp and leaf and wood. It actually expresses that in every shell of the tree, the benevolence, the love, the loyalty, the civic duty, the blessings on the neighborhood from the part of the man who has planted a tree is being reflected. So when we do something for nature, nature also stays grateful. And this uh, actually uh, it uh, she became uh, grateful towards us and uh, she reflects it in return she gives us back many other things and what's that that is the quality of our life now if we look uh, at the next lines we'll take the uh, four next four lines together who in the hollow of his hand holds all the growth of all our land, a uh, nation's growth from sea to she styles in his heart who plants a tree. So by planting a tree, the man directly or indirectly contributes to, to the nation's growth. When a tree is planted, it sheds in motion the progress of a nation from sea to sea. And all these start from the progressive thought in the man's heart who plants a tree. Here, the capitalization of his is also very much uh, important. So what does it indicate? It indicates that the man who plants a tree is all powerful and the destiny maker of a nation. So the last line is very important as it talks about the man's heart his feelings, dreams and wishes behind planting the tree. This also leads to the poem's title, The Heart of the Tree. So from here, you will find the justification of the title. So now the time has come to sum up everything. 
the poet Henry Berno ends up composing an uncommon piece of poetry in the heart of the tree out of a very common and rich topic the usefulness of planting a tree so that's all for the heart of the tree if you have any question you may write it down in the comment section below we are returning very soon with uh, many such videos which might uh, be uh, useful for my subscribers and my students so let's check what's waiting for you here in shiksha mantra until then bye bye happy learning